Hi, welcome to the Sky Studio tutorial series. Sky Studio brings extensive customization without sacrificing performance, so you can build beautiful and engaging content. Today we're going to talk about how to customize and control things on the Sky Timeline. The Sky Timeline is a feature that's completely unique to Sky Studio, and it's a custom user interface for building day-night cycles. This allows limitless creativity. Before we get started, let's make sure we're all looking at the same demo scene. We, we provide a really basic, uh, simple scene, and let's all open it up. Funly Sky Studio, Tutorials, Basic Starter, and you'll notice Basic Starter. I'm going to go ahead and just duplicate that scene and open that up so it don't modify the original. Let's take a look and create a new sky system in this scene by going to Set Up Sky. In a sky, system, sky preset we have that already implements a full day-night cycle um, is the full day sunrise to sunset. Let's open it up and just take a look at an example of what one looks like that's already pre-configured. So you'll notice in here we have a sky that's already installed and on our sky system controller, we, if we enable um, automatic time increment, we can hit play. And we'll notice that the sky is animating, it cha changed colors, the sun's moving progressively through the sky, and then you'll see a sunset trigger. And then you'll see the moon comes up, the stars came out, um, even things like the clouds, I believe, change color once it goes off into the sunset and, and into the sunrises. So this is all controlled through the sky timeline. It's a, a super flexible way for you to build custom day-night cycles in your game. Uh, for any art style you might need. This one is going for a real surrealism uh, style look um, because that's kind of what I like. Um, however, there are other presets that you can use and I'm going to show you guys now how to build your own. So now, now that we've kind of seen how this all works, let's take a quick peek at the sky profile. And you'll notice in here that some of the properties um, are no longer managed here. It says managed on timeline. And that's anything that we have to do multiple values for. We can't really represent it anymore just by having the one color for the sky, for example. So let's go ahead and open up the sky timeline. You'll notice there's a button here that says open timeline. You can go ahead and click that. It shows all the properties that are on the sky timeline. And you'll notice that pops open a window that has the full timeline on it. You can click to scrub, and this is changing the time of day in your scene. This is how you'll be scrubbing around as you, you create and test uh, your day-night cycle. I like to dock this window down here next to the game window so it's easy to see in the scene. And, and the values all referenced here are now over here. If for some reason you wanted to remove a, uh, something from the sky timeline, like the sky upper color, you could come up to here where it says sky upper, upper color and then click the minus button and that'll remove it from the timeline and restore it back to a single value here. So now that we understand how this works, we can see the colors are all ch are changing throughout the time of day to the blue skies here. You'll notice that the sun's, sun basically is built in to just disappear. It goes to zero size and then it comes up. You'll notice the light intensities here. We have the cloud density even changes for different times of day. And then we have the sun positions are all here. So it's a lot to take in at first. So let's go do something really simple and just build our own version of this. So since you already have a working copy that does um, a really complete, uh, more, more realistic style, let's go ahead and build more of a cartoon style one. So let's start over again and let's create a new sky system in the scene. Let's go to Window, Sky Studio, Setup Sky, and I'm going to go ahead and just use the most basic one here. Let's, um, well, since we're going to do a cartoon scene, let's do Tune Daytime. Click Create Sky, and then now we're starting with just a simple, simple scene here. So first, let's get started by adding the by adding the, um, the different colors for the sky onto the timeline. To add things onto the timeline, let's go ahead and just click the plus button. And then you'll notice these are the different sections for the features that you would see here normally. You always wanna make sure if you're trying to add something to the timeline, you actually enable the feature here or else you might find you're, you're manipulating values without having it actually visually rendering. Um, let's go ahead and add the sky. Let's add the upper color the middle color, 
And let's also add uh, the, the lower color. So let's go ahead and create a uh, sunrise. You'll notice, uh, just as I talk about things, these are the different groups. This is a keyframe. You can go ahead and you, in the keyframes, this is time of day on the x-axis. And so if we move the keyframe here, we can go ahead and actually adjust the color of it. So here we could do whatever we want. So now, so let's go ahead and create uh, maybe a, a nighttime keyframe. So let's do something, uh, we'll go cartoony so we can do something a little odder. Maybe we'll do, maybe we'll do like a dark purple nighttime. But well, then let's make the middle color something a little darker. Something like that looks fun for a nighttime. But well, then let's, let's build a, a sunrise here. So now for the upper color, you'll notice if I click the plus button, it'll create a keyframe wherever the cursor is positioned. So you're going to want to position the cursor, click plus, and then it'll drop a new keyframe. It'll always copy the value from the one before it. And then now let's go ahead and make this a little bit lighter because it's, it's going to be a sunrise. And maybe we'll bring it a little closer towards a different color as well. Maybe something like that. And then for the middle color, let's go ahead and just start lightening this up a little bit. Do something like that. Yeah, that looks fun. So now you'll notice as you drag the cursor, there's a transition between these different colors now. We can create more if we find it's a, it's a little bit too harsh. And we can add some intermediate steps. For the sake of uh, keeping the tutorial video short, I'm just going to kind of I'm just going to keep going here, and then I'm going to want to add one after this just to bring these colors to someplace a little more neutral, maybe something like that. I think looks great. But then let's bring the upper color into more of a typical daytime blue. Ooh, that's kind of a fun color actually. Let's do something like that. So you'll notice here now as I drag it, we get a nice little sunrise. So you're probably noticing now, well, the sun's in the same spot the whole time. That kind of breaks the illusion, huh? So let's go ahead and animate the sun into place here for during, this, uh, during this sunrise. So let's go add the sun into the sky timeline. And let's do the sun position. So we know we want the sun um, at this position that maybe it's currently at, maybe at uh, you know this time of day. We're going to do a cartoony thing where the sun's just going to pop up, and then we'll just dismiss and slide the sun back down um, so it doesn't have to go through a full arc in the sky. You can obviously also build the full arc, but I think this will look kind of fun for the style of game. So let's go ahead. I'm going to bring the sun. You'll notice. I'm going to, when you click the keyframes, you always get this keyframe inspector. It's context aware, so if I click a color keyframe, it shows you the color settings. If I click uh, move down here for the sun, it's showing me things that are relative to positioning, um, to positioning the sun, which is its horizontal and vertical position in the sky. So I'm going to go ahead and just pull the sun down a little bit. I feel like I'm going to keep it maybe a little bit down low, just kind of, uh, let's take a look in the game view here. Uh, I'm going to bring it, just keep it down low, just for the sake of keeping everything in view for the video. And then I'm going to put a keyframe right before it where I'll hide the sun. And that'll be just by reducing the vertical position down. Let's bring it down here to where you can't see it. So you'll notice now we have a little thing where it pops up. And you'll notice here as I drag forward it starts sliding down again, and that's because it's interpolating all the way back, looping around, and trying to get back to this value again. So what you're going to want to do is for the length of the daytime, for all of these things in the scene really, you're going to want to go ahead and click and extend out the day. So you're going to want to click plus and this drags out the blue so it's a steady blue. You're going to want to drag out this color. The lower color, it's white the whole time, that looks fine. But then over here, you're going to want to click 
plus button, and that's gonna see how it keeps the value the same. It's because it always copies the position, any, any keyframe value from the other one, it clones the previous keyframe. Uh, then now let's go ahead and have the sun set on the other side of this. And so we should probably, we need to put the colors in, but we can do that next actually. Let's go ahead and do here, and then we'll pull the vertical position back down. So you'll notice the sun pops down and pops up. So if we play this, we get a little sunrise, we get a blue day. I'm gonna change the middle color in the day to maybe white. And you'll notice you just get a nice cross blend slowly from that yellow color into that. And then you'll notice the sun's gonna slide down and we gotta set some nice, do a sunset here now. So let's go here, click the group, add a keyframe, and then let's move this into, let's do something nice and vibrant. That's kind of fun. And then let's add a keyframe up here. And then let's add keyframe here and bring it to maybe a more nighttime color. Oh yeah, so you know you oftentimes want to match the color here with over there and so there's a couple uh, neat little tricks to be able to do that. Well you know you obviously can go and just copy the color value um, but a trick I use a lot when I'm, when I'm working around with colors in here is you can kind of uh, use the fact that you know that when you create a keyframe it'll always copy the keyframe um, that's behind it. So if I go ahead and move the cursor here in the middle, click plus, it copies that color. And I'm just gonna drag that keyframe over here. You'll notice it'll just jump over them all. And then this one, I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that other keyframe. And you'll notice now we can go back and it's that same color that it's gonna end up being over here. And so you get a seamless transition all the way through. And I'm gonna do the same thing with this keyframe right here. I'm gonna go into the middle, I'm gonna click the plus button, it's gonna copy that color, and then I'm just gonna slide it down over here. And you'll notice now we have a nice, nice, nice uh, transition. If we go ahead, we could also add in a moon here as well. So as the sun goes down, let's pop, make the moon pop up we're gonna go hit the plus. Uh, well, first you gotta enable the moon. So let's go to features in the sky profile and click enabling the moon. And you'll see it's right there ready for us. And let's add it to the timeline. Moon, moon's position. And since the cursor is right here, that's where our new keyframe is gonna be created. So let's go ahead and click the plus button. I'm gonna do move it, I can still see the top of it here, so I wanna actually just hide it a little bit more. So let's move its vertical positioning down. Well then let's create a keyframe right here where we're gonna bring it up. So now we have that little, the sun goes down, the moon's gonna pop up. Well then let's go ahead and use the trick I showed you before where if I move the because we don't want the, the moon to instantly start sliding down, let's click, move the cursor to the right, click the plus button. It's going to copy this value. Notice it's stable now. And then let's just drag this all the way to the other side here. Looks like I had a keyframe over here before. I'm just going to go ahead and delete that one. You'll notice that when you, the active keyframe, if you're not sure which, what the keyframe inspector is controlling, it's always the one that's tinted a lighter color. See how I click between these and it changes color? So the first one, I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that. And then, now it's the position. And then, let's see where we want to, we need to dismiss the moon before the sun starts coming up. So we gotta do it before here. So I'm gonna go here. And then I'm gonna create another keyframe. And I'm gonna bring the moon back down and hide it. And then we have this nice animation here. And then we can take it a little bit further and let's add in some stars into the scene. So they come up and they're visible only at nighttime and then they disappear. So 
Let's go down. I, I enabled star layer one. I'm gonna scroll down to star layer one and give it a little bit of configuration before I put it on the timeline. Let's bring the density up so it com computes some stars in the sky. And that's good. And yeah, I'm gonna make the stars kind of kind of big since it's a cartoon uh, style. They don't need to be realistically speckled and small. But then let's go ahead and add the stars onto the timeline. So let's go to star layer one. And a common misconception is to try to add the density to the timeline. Uh, the density of the stars is um, heavily pre-optimized. It, it's, a, it's a performance boost for how Sky Studio works. And so uh, you actually don't, we, we don't actually allow you to modify that specific uh, value on the timeline. If you wanna animate the stars in and out, the way you do that is by animating the stars size. So you take its size from zero to um, whatever its, its value, target value is that you want it to be. Um, this is actually works out kind of perfect because in reality, this density of the stars isn't changing between day and night. It's just the visibility of them um, as the lighting changes. So let's go ahead and add the star one size onto the timeline. And then you'll notice now we have a different type of control. Before we were working with all colors and positions, and now we're working with a, a numeric value. So the X is still is time, and then the Y axis on this control is gonna end up being the value between its minimum and maximum value. So let's go ahead and take we already have it configured to a size we like here. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop a keyframe there. It's gonna pin down that value. Likewise, I'm gonna do that. We're gonna want the stars to probably start fading away. Somewhere around here looks good. Other than where we don't want the stars, let's create a keyframe. Other than you can go ahead and just pull it down to zero. Uh, it's a little hard to see on the maybe in the small videos, but if you pull it all the way down, you'll notice its value went to zero here before the, the value was that. You can change the interpolation type if, if you wanted to between these to ease in and out. Linear is fine for what we're working on right now. And then likewise over here, I'm gonna pin it down to zero as well. So now we have the size of the stars is zero during the day, and then it's gonna start fading, the, scaling the size up for nighttime the moon's gonna come up, the stars are gonna stay out, and then I'm gonna move it up a little bit. There we go, and then the stars fade away. So if we click play, we should have a seamless day-night cycle here. And I'll start it maybe just right from the beginning here. Click automatic time increment, and that'll tell Sky Studio to just automatically play this in, a, in an infinite loop. And then we're gonna click play. So you'll notice the sun comes up. If you look at the cursor here, it's, uh, you can watch it play back the values. We're in a very long daytime. And then sunset, stars come out, there's our moon. And I think this gives you a great idea of the powerful features of the Sky Studio timeline and how, how much time you could really just deep dive and be in this thing all day coming up with just amazing skies. Um, something that's important to mention, um, it's not specific to the timelines, but sometimes people say they um, reach out to me and ask about, uh, they wanna build different timelines and different profiles for different things. Um, it, that's absolutely fine. It, at runtime, you can always go ahead and you can create multiple sky profiles, as many as you'd like. I think you can go ahead and just change them at runtime by grabbing the time of day controller component and just assign them into the sky profile. If you need to be able to do certain logic, like maybe you want to have um, you know, some sound effects or things like that, that that trigger at certain times on the timeline, in, in the sky timeline, uh, we offer a programmatic way to be able to get an update every time the time of day changes in the scene and we'll deliver that back to you. It's on the time of day controller and you can register a callback handler and we'll provide you with the time and you can check for the times that you're interested in, in triggering certain events. I think that's it for the uh, this Sky Timeline. I could talk about this thing all day. I, I absolutely love it. <laughs> and uh, if you have any questions, please reach out. And thanks for following. Take care.